So let's talk about some kinds of delusions so that we can sort of understand the different categories of delusions. Now, it's sometimes helpful to think about delusions as occurring on a continuum because although there are certain categories that delusions fall into, sometimes delusions just sort of fall into several different categories at once or have flavors of different categories at one time. But let's talk about some of the more famous categories of delusions. So perhaps the most famous delusion, the most famous type of delusion is a delusion of reference. And a delusion of reference is when someone believes that completely mundane events have extreme significance for them. So here's a perfect example of a delusion of reference. Let's say that someone who's experiencing a clinical delusion is watching a basketball game on TV and LeBron James makes a fadeaway three-pointer and like right near the end of the game, they like points to the camera and then you know, the other team calls a timeout and like the whole place goes crazy. Uh, the person who's experiencing the delusion might be watching that and saying, you know, LeBron James was pointing at me. And you'd be like, what do you mean? He's like, LeBron James, he knows me. Like he's one of my friends. And he knows that I'm watching right now. And he was pointing at me because he wanted me to see that three-pointer. And it's like, well, I, is, wasn't he sort of just pointing at the camera, just like a showmanship, like, you know, I'm the baddest in the world kind of thing? It's like, no, 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 no. He was pointing at me. That's what it's like to have a delusion of reference. Something that's completely mundane that has no connection to you whatsoever. You firmly believe that there's a connection to you, specifically to you and to no one else. Here's a great example of a delusion of reference. And what, if you work at a psychiatric hospital where you meet people who have these different kinds of delusions, you sort of, when you see the world, you sort of can understand when certain things might trigger someone's delusions. For a perfect example, this shirt that I'm wearing has an eye on it. Um, this shirt is a, uh, a bare naked ladies band shirt. If you'll know who they are, look them up. They're a pretty good band. Um, someone might be watching this video right now. If you're experiencing a delusion of reference, you might be saying, you know, that eye, that eye is a symbol. It's watching me. He's wearing that shirt because he wants me to know that I'm, that he's watching me. That, you know, like, you know, that, that's what the eye means. It's, it's related to me. He wore that shirt because of me. That's an example of a delusion of reference. I just want to point out, like, no, I'm not wearing this shirt because of anybody. I'm not wearing this shirt because of an image of anything. But someone who's having delusion of reference might actually believe that. I've actually seen videos on YouTube where people, people watch comedy specials and they, they start breaking on the comedy special and saying, you see the way that the comedian was holding the microphone? That's a symbol. That's, that's a satanic symbol. And he was doing that on purpose because he wanted everyone to know, you know that, that he's, he's running a satanic cult. And you see the way that he sort of stopped right there, like the, the, his body language? That's, that's an evil gesture right there. He's doing that on purpose because he wants to send a message to me and to other people that he's evil and that he's, he's, you know, he's watching us. I've seen videos like that by people who are clearly experiencing clinical delusions. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's unfortunate. But, I mean, there's a perfect example of delusion reference. Okay, so that's one. Um, another very classic one is a delusion of grandeur. A delusion of grandeur is when you believe you are famous, that you are well known, that everyone loves you, that you are popular, that you are powerful. That's a delusion of grandeur. So when I was working in the psychiatric hospital, I met, I met dozens of people who were experiencing delusions of grandeur and they would say things like, um, oh, I'm, um, I'm a famous musician. And I'd say, oh, really? I'd say, like, what kind of music do you make? They're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a rapper. I make, I make rap music. I actually went on tour last year. And I'd say, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, what's your rap name? And they'd say their rap name. And then I'd go home that night just, just out of curiosity. I'd go home that night and look them up on Instagram or on, on whatever. And they would have, like, five followers. And the short music clips that they post would be objectively bad. And I don't say that because I'm judging these people in a negative light. Again, I'm someone who I know what it's like to have a delusion. I know, I get it. I understand. And it, it's not a character flaw of them. It's, it's a mental illness that is, it's a representation of a mental illness. But the, when the person says that they're a famous rapper and you look them up online and they're not anything famous at all, like I have more Facebook followers than they do, which is, which is a pretty small number, like that tells you that the person's experiencing a delusion. There's just no evidence backing up that they're a famous person. There's no evidence backing up that they went on a tour. They, I can't, you can't find anything anywhere that they ever went on a tour or did anything even related to that. So perfect example of a delusion of grandeur. Another delusion of grandeur is when someone thinks um, like, oh, I'm writing a paper right now and the, the, the things that I found are gonna solve 
the world's problems. I'm, I'm going to solve hunger with this paper that I'm writing. It's a research paper. I'm going to solve the world's hunger needs. And you might say, oh, well, what kind of, what stuff do you talk about? And there's like, well, I talk about how, you know, if you, you know, take these certain seeds and combine them, it's going to, it's going to make, you know, you could feed the entire world with one acre of land. And just, just assume that they're, the person's not, there's no scientific basis for what they're saying. Just assume that it's completely just, just bad science that they're talking about. But the person truly believes that what they're doing is just sort of going to change the world and, 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 you know, just everyone's going to come to love them and just adore them. They're going to be famous someday because of what they're doing right now. That's another example of delusion of grandeur. And before I continue, I want to point out, it's clear to see how there's sometimes a, a, a very fine line between delusional and genius. Because, you know, someone like Tesla or someone like Einstein, they did work that changed the world. Like, when they were making that work, if they had the thought to themselves, this is going, like, when, when Einstein was developing his theory of relativity, if his thought when he was developing it was like, this is going to change the world because this is going to help us understand physics better. It's going to help us understand, um, you know, chemistry better. And it's going to help us understand the cosmology better. Like, he's right. It, it did change the world. His, 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 his equation completely fundamentally changed science forever. So if, in that case, that's not being delusional because there is evidence behind the belief that what he's doing is going to change the world. But someone who's pecking away at a keyboard, writing up a disjointed five-page blog post who thinks that it's going to cure diseases, that's delusional. That, that's, that's not rational thinking. And that's where, that's where you get into a delusion of grandeur, when the person believes they're way, way more famous or way, way, way more important than they truly are. All right, another popular delusion is a persecutory delusion. A persecutory delusion is when someone believes that they are being silenced or kept quiet or punished by other people. So a classic example would be, let's say that, right, so for example, I'm writing a book right now. I've been writing a book for months. It's a very slow process. I don't know when it's going to be done. But let's say that I started to believe that there were people in the world who wanted to completely destroy my work. And let's say that I was so afraid of my work ever being found by these people that I only ever hand wrote all my notes and I kept them locked in a box in my room. And I only ever wrote my book at nighttime in the dark because I believe that no one could see me then. That would be an example of a persecutory delusion where I'm believing that someone is trying to keep me down. And like a perf another way that could, something that could feed into this is let's say that I'm typing um, on my computer, and let's say that there's like a, a weird power outage on my, my laptop, my laptop just gets fried. If I'm having a persecutory delusion, I'm going to believe, oh, these evil powers that are trying to keep me down, they zapped my computer, and that's why my computer stopped working. So there's a, a perfect example of a persecutory delusion. Another delusion, a type of delusion, is an erotomatic delusion. An erotomatic delusion is a delusion that someone has when they believe that someone usually someone famous or someone in, in a position of power is in love with them. So I actually know someone in my family who I'm not going to say who, but uh, her whole life, she always sort of believed that everyone was in love with her. And it, <laughs> it clearly wasn't the case. Um, you know, you wonder why I have bipolar 2 disorder. Um, <laughs> but um, so someone who has an erotomatic delusion, they might say, you know, oh, you know, Justin Bieber's in love with me. Or they might say, Taylor Swift's in love with me. Um, Taylor Swift, uh, you know, wrote that song about me because she's in love with me. And it's like, dude, you never even met Taylor Swift. How is she in love with you if you never even met her? It's like, well, no, she knows I, she knows I exist and she, she's, she loves me. And she's, she's writing these, these songs for me so that I will get the hint and I will, you know, go meet her and fall in love with her and, you know, we can get married. Another, a more simple example of that is when someone believes that their boss at work is in love with them. It's, that's another sort of common thing. Like the boss, the manager, the CEO of the company... And the reason they believe that the person is in love with them is like, it would be very simple things. Like, do you, do you see he looked at me? And we'd be like, well, what about it? It's like, the way he looked at me, I just know he's in love with me. And again, some of you are watching saying, but that's plausible. It is plausible sometimes. But again, that's why there's a fine line sometimes between delusions and, and actually true rational thinking. But... Usually when someone has erotomatic delusions, it's sort of, it's consistent with almost everyone they meet. So it's not like a one-off. Like, yeah, there are times when a manager could fall in love with uh, an employee. 
and could sort of, you know, in the office give them sort of like the lovey-dovey eyes. And it, like, it, and a neutral observer could watch them, the two of them interact and know that the manager, CEO, does have feelings for the employee. But someone who has an erotomatic delusion, they base their, del they, they base their belief on terrible evidence that a neutral observer would, would be like, nah, I don't see that. I don't see what you're seeing. And also, they typically have erotomatic delusions a lot of the time about a lot of different people. So it's almost like everyone they meet, they're like, oh, that person's love. Did you see that person clearly is in love with me? It's like, not everyone's in love with you. And that, the way I just said that, I was sort of just talking to the person in my family who, she's no longer with us, but <laughs> that's sort of what we always wanted to tell her is like, look, not everyone's in love with you. It's just the way it is. Um, okay, so that's an erotomatic delusion. Another example of a delusion that's sort of similar to an erotomatic delusion is a jealous delusion. A or just a you know, delusion of jealousy. A delusion of jealousy is typically when you believe your partner is cheating on you despite all evidence to the contrary. And this one's very tough. This is, again, another very fine line because someone who has a history of being cheated on might become just overly afraid of being cheated on again. So they might start to develop what we might consider to sort of be neurotic or paranoid thoughts about what their partner's doing, and they might always sort of need reassurance the person's not cheating on them. That makes sense. Like, you know, we are sort of a product of what we've experienced, and if we've learned this sort of behavior, then it's a lot more normal. It's like it's not helpful for us, we should want to work on it, but it's not like a clinical medical illness kind of issue. A delusion of jealousy is when you don't have that kind of background. It's just that everyone you date, you are 100% sure that person's cheating on you all the time. It's like, well, you were five minutes late. You were meeting up with your girlfriend. It's like, no, I wasn't. I was like, there was traffic. I was five minutes. Like, you know, then the next day, you know, who would you just send a text message to? It's like, oh, well, you know, my friend was asking me about the fantasy baseball league. No, you're, no you're not. Show me your phone. You're cheating on me. That's what a delusion of jealousy is like. It's a constant repetitive belief that someone has that the other person is cheating on them. And it's like, no matter what evidence you, you present to them, they just create more reasons to believe or, or different evidence to believe that their delusion is actually true. And that's sort of like um, in, in, you know, um, in logic, what's, what's sort of considered like moving the goalposts. Like someone might say, you know, who'd you just text? And you say, oh, my friend, Bob. It's like, no, you didn't. You text your girlfriend, show me your phone. And so you show them the phone and you say, look, it says, Bob, there's a timestamp one minute ago. Here's why I sent him about the fantasy baseball league. And they go, no, 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 that's not, that's not what happened. You have an app on your phone that removes the text messages and makes and changes them to be text messages that look like you're going to your friends. So that way that, you know, you can hide what you're doing. It's like, no, it's not like here, look at my phone. There are no other apps on my phone. It's like, well, the reason the app's not appearing on your phone is because it's a special app that you can't see it on, the, on the, the, the home screen of the phone. It's like, no matter what you do to prove to this person who's experiencing the jealous delusion that you're not cheating on them, they'll just create other reasons about why they're correct and why they'll create explanations for the, that, that invalidate what you are pointing to as evidence to prove that you're not cheating on them. So that's why if you've ever been in a relationship with somebody who's experiencing a jealous delusion, again, not someone just simply who's been cheated on in the past and is a little bit afraid of being cheated on in the future. I'm talking about someone who's experiencing a clinical delusion. If you ever date someone like that, it's just an exhausting, just a constant stream of accusations that you get. So that's not um, helpful for anybody. Um, and one more, I'll give one more example of a delusion that's sort of more common one again is a paranoid delusion. That sort of goes back to the thing I talked about in the, in the beginning of this video of like the person who believes that the mailman is a, a CIA assassin who's spying on them and is going to kill them. I, I used to work in the psychiatric hospital. I worked with tons of people who were experiencing paranoid delusions. I was accused of being a, an assassin or some sort of spy literally dozens of times to the point where there were some weeks where I would go in there to work and every day a different person would accuse me of being a spy or an assassin. Typically, one of the reasons why is because I'm a guy, I'm, I'm kind of thin, and I'm like six feet one inches tall, so I sort of fit like the classic white man, tall, thin, white guy who might be in the military, might be in the CIA, might be wearing sort of like a suit and tie, like the men in black kind of thing, like, you know, uh, spying on people. I sort of fit the, the profile of like a devious kind of spy or like a double agent or whatever. And... Um, so I would get that a lot from people. They just come up to me and they'd be like, I know why you're here. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, why do you think I'm here? 
and they'd be like, because you're, you're here to spy on me. Like, you, you know, you're here to, to track me. I know that you work for the government. And I, I'd be like, like, no, actually, I just work for the hospital. I'm just a mental health technician. Just, you know, I want to help work in a job that I help people. And they go, I know that they tell you to say that. I'm, I'm just letting you know I'm watching you. That's what it's like when you're talking to somebody who has a delusion. And if, 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 by the way, if I'm, if, you know, if, if some of my acting seems too real or lifelike, it's because go work at a psychiatric hospital for six months. You, you know, you start to pick up on the mannerisms and the behavior very easily. So that's what it's like. And I've actually, when I was working in the psychiatric hospital where people, people accuse me of being a hitman, they would sometimes sit in the middle of the, of the room and they would be afraid the whole time. They'd be, they'd be afraid of me the whole time. They'd just be watching me the whole time, like waiting for the moment when I'm going to kill them. And they would sit there and watch me for the entire eight hour shift. Like I'd be doing the most boring things ever. Like I'm going to go help this person do their laundry. And they just sit in there watching me the whole time, you know, staring at me. And I like, I go back out of the room, you know, I go to help someone you know, get their food for dinner. And they're watching me do that. And like just, they're, they're just afraid that I'm going to at some point just turn around and kill them. And I used to sort of say that, to, I'd be like, look, I'd be like, here's the thing. I guarantee you, in my eight-hour shift, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill anybody because I work for the hospital. Like, I don't, I'm not here to kill, I'm here to help people, not kill people. Um, but unfortunately, when you work with people who have delusions, it, it doesn't matter trying to explain to them that you, trying to explain to them that their delusion is not true. Even if you use the most sort of flowery language, the most uh, nice, agreeable tone, if they're firmly stuck in their delusion, it doesn't matter. They're just going to say that you're lying. It's not going to make a dent. So um, I, made, I have another video uh, that I made a couple years ago about how to talk to a delusional person. And that sort of goes into some tips I learned from working in the psychiatric hospital about how to interact with someone who's experiencing a delusion. 